Hey, my name is Pascal, and today it's time for the full review of the Garmin Instinct 2. Let's do this. <laughs> oh yes, it was about time. Uh, I'm very happy to talk to you today about this watch. It was about time because uh, the first model, the Instinct 1, is a watch that I loved because it is cheap and it's deliver a lot. Like, almost has a high-end watch. It's just in a cheaper case, but I, I do recommend the first model a lot because it's cheap and it does a lot. So does the new generation worth it? That's what we're gonna see in the next few minutes. So yes, I did my full review uh, guide just right here. So we're gonna pass through those pages in the next minute. The video will be long. This is why it is all chaptered down there in the uh, timeline. So if you want to skip to a point that you want to see right now, you can do this. Or if at some point I do about I do talk about something you don't care, skip to the next chapter. I won't be mad. The first point is what kind of user I am. It is important to talk about because we do not use the watches the same way depending on the sport we do. So I'm a, I, do, I do a lot of cycling, walking, hiking, sometimes running, and that's the sport I do the most. Uh, maybe if you are swimming or golfing, how our needs is different. So I tested it on those sports. For the rest of the video, we will change of plan so you can see the watch very well. So uh, there we are on that plan. Uh, talking about the first point, that is the build quality. Uh, well, of course, um, well, the term they use uh, for the material of, of the watch is fiber reinforced polymer. Um, I don't know if it's plastic or it's just a fancy way to say plastic but well the first word you have in mouth when you look at the watch is plastic maybe it's not but it does feel like plastic uh, still it's very good quality fiber reinforced polymer uh, it doesn't you see I tried to try it and it's very it's a very solid watch it's a very robust watch uh, I would not worry to drop it kind of at a kind of a high altitude um, smash it or on something I didn't try to smash it or to uh, knife it well it's my watch I buy it with my own money and I hope to <laughs> resell it so I um, I, I don't try to break it, uh, but I'm pretty confident that uh, it's a great uh, build quality. It feels like a great build quality, but still you pay some money for a plastic watch. Now, if we speak about the screen, um, well, it does look like a Gorilla Glass, but uh, if we look at the uh, Garmin website, they say it's chemically strengthened glass. Uh, it does feel like plastic. It does really feel like like Gorilla Glass. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it is. I, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't feel to be very easily scratched. But of course, I'm pretty sure that, that if I take my knife just right here and I do some stuff on it, I will regret it. Um, but uh, still, uh, I don't think that it's a, a screen that it, that it is easily scratchable just because it is very deep inside the bezel. So unless you knock your uh, watch on a counter, uh, a corner counter or something, you really smash it on, on, on a corner, uh, you probably won't never scratch it. Um, if you knock it on uh, the wall uh, or those kind of thing, maybe you will got your bezel scratch after some time. Uh, but it's 
still look very, very solid, uh, but I don't think it will reach your glass. So that is not a problem. I would have loved that they put the option to got the sapphire crystal glass, but it's not available. I love sapphire crystal glass because it is almost not scratchable. Now, let's talk about options that you have when you buy the watch. Uh, there's a lot of options. There's actually 20 different model in size, color, um, model. <laughs> so uh, the first option you will have is between 45 millimeter or 40 millimeter. This is the 45 millimeter. And then you're going to have the standard camo, uh, tactical, surf and diesel. Uh, so the standard, well, is, is the base model. Uh, you can add the camo, so it will have a, a camouflage uh, a print on it. Uh, that's the only thing it got. Uh, you've got the surf one uh, that is made to go on uh, surf. It got some... I didn't try it, but it should have some options for surf people. The diesel, so D-E-Z-L so uh, delta echo zulu lima uh, uh, this one is made for a trucker so it have some features for a trucker and this one is the tactical model uh, this one does have some features that we will see a bit later for uh, military but the reason i got this one is just because of the color because uh, with the other model you will have some options between uh, gray red blue or those kind of colors uh otherwise if you see that is the uh, first model so that's the instinct one uh on the base color so i think it's ugly it's a very ugly uh color they do not make a black standard model so i did pick the tactical you pay some extra dollars uh, you got the tactical features that you will not use, but you got the black collar that I love. So that's the only reason why I picked the tactical edition, just to have uh, the black collar. So yes, if you go with the tactical, the diesel or the surf edition, you will have few features for those kind of activities. Uh, but that's the only thing you will get. Uh, the only real difference you will see is between the 40 and the 45 millimeters. Uh, it's, and it's about the uh, battery life. Now let's talk about the GPS precision. Everything works very fine and I doesn't have nothing negative to say about it. When I do navigate outside and look at my track later, I'm on the right side of the road. When I go inside a trail in the forest, there is no problem. I Maybe sometime it goes out a little bit, but just a little bit. It, it is very... Uh, very good at uh, tracking myself uh, when I'm coming back on my feet uh, it, it does track the same distance and when I do look the GPS track everything is fine so the GPS works very well now if we talk about the hearth rate sensor the one at the back uh, again very very good and it's the same one that you will find on uh, the bigger model so if we go uh, that's the uh, Carmen uh, Apex 2 uh, so very much uh, more expensive and uh, as you can see just right here it's the very same hearth rate sensor uh, if I put my finger back there maybe at some point it will turn green and you will be able to see uh, the green light yeah just like that it will be on for a few seconds and as you can see it just react the same way uh, the other one uh, turns on some uh, red light and that's to uh, get your uh, blood oxygen so a very, very good result with it. The only thing I could say is that, well, you, you see here on the front page uh, on the main screen, I have my hearth rate just right here. Actually, you can't see nothing because it's not on my wrist. But uh, when I do start an activity at a very high pace very quickly, uh, I do tend to realize that uh, it is a little bit off track for a few minutes. Uh, I think the reason is that it does, uh, in, instead of just telling you your actual earth rate, it does give you your average earth rate for maybe the last minute. So if, for example, you are at 60 beat per minute and you start working out very hard, you pump at 150, you will see uh, the number climbing slowly from 60 to 150, for example. But once you are maybe cycling at a very high pace, 
for a while, well, the number you will see uh, on the watch will make sense. Now, let's talk about the flashlight. Uh, and whoops, I've just realized that my watch is actually in French because I did the tutorial in French. Uh, so I'm going to go into the menu, go down here in system and language and change it to Spanish, uh, not Spanish, English, and just wait a bit. Uh, I will explain you how to navigate uh, into the watch a bit later. But now that everything is in English, I can go in control here and navigate to the flashlight that is just right there and select it and yes it's only a white screen with a flashlight logo uh, that's what we see when you have two big spot going on the screen but uh, if you are in pit in a pitch black environment yes it does create a bit of light the same way as when you turn on your phone screen um, yes it does look stupid but if you are in the middle of the trail in night in a cloudy night with no moon and it's absolutely pitch black because uh, you are in the forest well uh, I don't say that you will be able to see in front of you very far but you will be able to see where your trail is and that will help you a lot uh, if you just want to go to the toilet at night it's very dark inside you just want to light up a little bit your way you will be able to see a little bit of the things that are around for sure it is not comparable with the new flashlight they put on the seven uh, phoenix 7x and the tactics that you double press here and you got a flashlight yes this is mind-blowing this is a very very good feature it is not comparable with that kind of flashlight but still this is a very good feature the next point is about the independency of the watch and what is this this means that you can do pretty much everything with your watch without the help of any phone or computer it just work on its own this means that for example if you want to change the data fields you have here on uh, the uh, watch face i just need to go inside the menu go into watch face uh, well i can select another interface if that's what i want but uh, i will keep that one because i love it and i will say customize and you see here you got the moon cycle and i can change the data just like that uh, we'll put it back to moon cycle but if i come here you see i can change the graph so i can uh, instead of having the earth rate i can have the barometric pressure the battery life uh, the number of steps of the day those kind of things and then we have here the elevation everything uh, can be edited as you wish and you can do that straight from the watch uh, it's this very same principle if you are into an activity so let's say I go inside bike uh, that's the information I have before starting it we will see a bit later uh, data screen right here you see I've got my speed average speed distance and time of the day but if I want to change one of those well I just need to uh, select it just right here I can change the layout even if I want uh, but if I want to change the last one that one that was the time of the day and I can select something else into those fields and select another data of course if you prefer to do it uh, straight on your phone and uh, just do it on a bigger screen you can uh, but that, that's something new if you pick the old model uh, that was only possible uh, from the watch but if you want to do it on your phone you can but if you don't have your phone or your phone to have a TED battery or um, I don't know if you don't have your phone well you can change it straight on the watch and it goes very well it, it is very quick to do it's probably more quicker to do it on the watch than on the phone so that's something that I love uh, I think the only thing you will lost if you are not synced to your phone is the weather uh, you see actually it says it's 24 degrees outside that information comes from the Garmin Connect app uh, mixed with the uh, location of the phone uh, so I, th I think that's the only feature that you will lost um, of course we can talk about synchronization uh, yes of course if you want to take some information out of the the watch you will need another device uh, but uh, if we just speak about the watch starting an activity uh, going to a point and th those things you can all do that from the watch and even change every data fields there is 
uh, everything can be edited straight from the watch. The next point is about its resistance to disuse and it's a bit uh, linked to the previous point uh, because the resistance to disuse is uh, made of two major points. The first one is its build quality and as I said it is very well made. I think it is made to last. Everything seems very uh, solid and uh, made to resist over time. The other thing that can make a, a, a produce disuse is the health of the company. So if, for example, Garmin go bankrupt, uh, you don't end up like all other watch brands. And yes, I do talk about Sunto, Poller, and Coros. Those three uh, watch brand, if they go bankrupt and the app is no longer available, you kind of end up with an empty shell. With that one, because you can do modify everything on the watch and you can edit everything on the watch, well, you got something that can still be used. And even if you can't, so let's say that Garmin go bankrupt and the Garmin Connect app is no longer available, well, yes, of course, you will lose the weather. But that's probably the only thing you will lose because if you want to sync your activity that you have recorded on the watch on Strava, you can connect it with the USB cable at the back to your computer and extract the, the, your, your last activity uh, data to the computer and then to Strava. So, yeah, it's uh, very, very uh, resistant to disuse. The next point is about the quantity of sport available inside the watch and actually there's a lot. So if I go inside bike, uh, no, sorry, that's the sport menu. So I go inside, uh, it says GPS, but when I do press on it, it's the sport menu. Uh, I've got my favorite activity. So yes, there's bike, walk, run, pull, swim, strength, ski, snowboard, and whatever. Let's go down right here to add so we can see everything. Yes, there is the multi-sport mode that is just right here, but we will come back to it in a few minutes. Uh, just let's see a little bit lower how the sport available. So there's trail run, tread mile, virtual run, track run, indoor track, and I will just go very quickly because uh, you can read. And as you can see, yes, there is a lot of activity. It's not the watch that does have the most activity available, but still, as you can see, that's a lot. And if you don't uh, find your activity, you can go on other, name it, and uh, choose the, the, the information that you want to see. Now, the great thing about it is that all of those activity are straight inside the watch. So you don't need to go on an application and say, well, I want to have elliptical yoga, high intensity interval training, uh, and that one. And then at some point, well, now I want to walk. So I will need to remove uh, yoga to put back walk. Everything is straight inside the watch. So you don't need to manage all of uh, those activity. They are inside your watch. Very well made. Now, let's talk about the um, multi-sport mode. So, as you can see, if I did go back right there, 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 there is the multi-sport mode. And if I go in, I can choose if I want to do a triathlon, duathlon, brick, swim run, or custom. So, if I go inside custom, well, I will be able to give it a name, but just name it that way for the example. That's the C. And you choose uh, what you want to have as first activity. So let's say that I will start that with a walk, and then uh, activity will activity two will be ski, and the next one will be bike. That seems funny. I can say done if I want to be done, but I can still add some more. So uh, let's go to <laughs> tread miles, and finally let's pick another one that will be track run. All right. So I've got uh, five, five is the maximum. So I can enable transition. Transition will be at the end of an activity. Uh, I think it's you press start button or something like this. And then you will pass to the next one. And uh, let's say that the second one is cycling and you need to change your shoe. You can input your uh, changing gear time into a transition time instead of the time of the activity. Very well made. And you got some uh, other 
options. But uh, I never use that multi-sport mode because I don't like to need to plan before I start the activity. So what I do is that uh, if you go inside the menu right here and you go into system and go down to hotkeys, uh, I put, you see if I hold GPS, the change sport option. We will come back to the to the odd keys later. But that what, what this makes is that if I start an activity, so let's say that I do bike and I start my activity. So now my bike activity is start. Uh, if, uh, oh, well, now I could ski maybe because, well, there's a pair of ski just right there. I will hold the GPS button, go down to ski, select it and now uh yeah i've just switched so you see there's 16 seconds of bike and now i'm on ski so the the screen will change for my ski activity uh data fields and now the live track we will see that a bit later thank you you can go away eventually ah, pause it. ah anyway <laughs> so uh yes the, that that uh, start the other uh, activity and now uh, my ski activity is start since 25 seconds and uh, well that's what it done uh, actually yes it does calculate some uh, speed and distance because I am inside so the GPS uh, uh, location is really poor so I will stop that and I could I could change of activity again if I would like but I would just discard that and we will pass to the next option I just wanted to show you that you can change of activity at any time during any any activity even if you didn't plan it uh, the next point is about uh, the possibility to reverse the watch and it's actually not possible and I think it's very sad because the watch has been uh, think to be uh, to be held on uh, your left wrist for right-handed person because uh, you can go up and down with those two buttons it goes very well uh, select with that one go back with that one so it, it, it is made to to be very comfortable to use on your left wrist but if you go on the other side well you're gonna have to use your index on that time. maybe it's not this bad but uh, it would it would go so much better uh, for a left-handed person person to to just got it on its right uh, wrist so they could reverse uh, the button functions of course maybe it's hard to do with that kind of uh, screen because well every button has been uh, written up so if you reverse it uh, those one will be reversed and those one too and there's actually that I don't know why they made that we will come back on this later but uh, because they put that circle just right here and it's just a circle over the screen uh, well that doesn't make it really possible to put it on the other side but that's the way it is I just talk about this point on every watch because Koros let their, the, their watch to be uh, to be upside down uh, and they reverse the screen inside so the watch can be used on the side people want to use it now let's talk about the widgets so the widget can be found from the main page when you go up and down with those two buttons so let's say that I go down I've got here the ABC widget uh, that let me uh, see in which direction I point so you see this is uh, east northwest and there's uh, somewhere over there uh, south well actually that's not a good demo kind of weird maybe because I'm inside I don't know east well it's kind of weird usually it goes very fine probably because there is something around here inside not sure uh, but usually it goes well very <laughs> that is really not a good demo hmm uh, but uh, for sure it, it is uh, going so much better outside so you can see in which direction you point technically uh, <laughs> and uh, you can see your actual elevation and the arrow is the barometric pressure that is actually stable 
If I go down, I can see the uh, elevation for the previous four hours and the barometric uh, pressure. As you can see, it is dropping, but it's not dropping too dramatically. So uh, the arrow uh, simply say it is actually straight. If you see it pointing down, this means that there is a storm incoming. Uh, so let's go back. What do we have else? I love this one. Weather. So actually it is 24 degrees Celsius outside. And today the maximum is 23 and minimum 6. If we go inside here, I can see again that same information. Uh, there is actually rain incoming. Um, and there's a wind of 24, 21 kilometers uh, per hour from west coming in. And it does feel like 24. And if we go lower, you got the forecast for the next few hours, just right there, the next few days, and uh, the 12 hour trend. So the line represents the temperature, and the bars represent the uh, chances of rain. And there's the air quality index that is actually good. Uh, let's go back. What do we have hell? Sunset and sunrise. I love that one. So straight from here, I can see that the sun has rise as uh, at 502 this morning and will set at 2041 tonight. And there's actually six hours and four minutes of sun left. And if I go inside the widget, I'm able to see uh, that again, that that same information. But I am also able to see uh, the twilight time and the actual position of the sun in the sky. Um, yeah, very well. And if I press the up and down button, I'm able to see for the next or the previous days, uh, what is the sunset and sunrise time for all of those days. Very well done again. Uh, that's my last activity, number of steps of the day, my actual earth rate. And if I go inside, uh, there would be a graph. Let me show it to you with that watch that's almost the same thing but the screen just look better uh, if i go here i can see uh, the graph of the past few hours and if i go down uh, i'm also able i think that one will be visible uh, right there because all of those watch does sync together so yes you can see my average uh, rest hearth rate for the past uh, seven days so you're able to see it just right there if you wear it uh, few days in a row um, that's the body battery uh, sleep time calendar notification and uh, that's made the tour but if I go inside the menu and go to that option just right here to add glance I can have even more uh, glance widget widget that was the word i was looking for you can add all of those one if you want to have more there's also the controls that are available just right here if you press and hold the control button here you will have some more options so you it, it is quick access to lock keys do not disturb backlight uh, settings uh, battery saver you can power off the watch yes you can do that that's a very good feature um, i can't believe i do talk about that uh, but yes, yes, actually, yes, you can see the watch is off. And if I press back here, uh, it will power on. Uh, but yes, I need to talk about it because uh, most of the other watch brands, you can't turn off the watch. So if you just use it sometime, maybe on some month, uh, when you go to the mountain and the rest of the time, it just sleep on your desk. You're, when, you, when you're going to need it, your battery will be dead. So with that one, you can just... Uh, recharge it, set it off, and turn it on when you, you are ready to use it again. Uh, what what else do we have? Uh, well, we have seen the flashlight, the stopwatch, timers, alarm, uh, wallets. Um, well, actually, I'm in Canada, and I, I think there's only two bank that is compatible with uh, Garmin Pay, so I'm not able to test it. I told you that we we we, we were able, we will see some uh, tactical. Uh, feature so features that are only available on the tactical uh, version of the Garmin Instinct 2. Stealth mode is one of them. Uh, if you enable that, what it does is that it's disable every antenna so that the enemy will not be able to scan you over uh, wireless devices. Um, 
and it will also stop to track you inside the watch so you will be able to see where you are on the grid what is your actual location uh, where you are accordingly to a uh, route that you try to follow but it will not record your uh, your position uh, so that's the stealth mode and there's also the night vision mode that if you enable it it will turn on a very very dim uh, backlight uh, you you probably you you will probably be able to see it with your naked eye in the in, in the night but it is made to be visible with your night vision Google and there's another feature that you, we don't see here that if you press those two buttons together it does activate the kill switch and if you don't do nothing it will factory reset the watch so i will press a button because i don't want to do that right now uh, but that's the kill switch option that is only available on the tactical edition you also got the find my phone that is a function that i use a lot because i lose my phone every a um, couple of times every day so when i do look for it instead of searching everywhere i just come to on my watch go and find my phone press right here and you can hear it in the back that's my phone that is uh ringing because i asked for it uh, you also got the music control option. Um, we will see that, well, just right now, because we've done the tour of those uh, <laughs> those control. Well, you can find other control if you press and hold on the menu and go on the hat control. You have some uh, other options that you can have if you plan to use something uh, quite often. Uh, okay, music control. Uh, you see, it's available just right here. As I said earlier, uh, those uh, controls uh, are, are quick access to some features that you can access some other ways because you can have access to music control by going into the control, select music control. You can also uh, go inside the menu, I think, and go down to, is it available here? No, finally, it's not, not on that watch. But anyway, uh, what I want to show you is how well it's made if you want to control the music of your phone well for sure you need to have a, a phone application uh, a music application turn on on your phone actually it's not the case so it will not work but if i press and hold that button that's like that by default uh, i fall on the music control app so i just need to press play right here to make the music play but as i told you i i'm not on a music application uh, if it would be the case uh, we would be able to see the music title just right here i would be able to skip to the next track just right there i could see the the time of the the music just right there and if i go inside the menu here uh, there is a play pause button just right here skip previous and if i go here on uh, the speaker i would be able to control the volume very very well made i use it very often when I do bike I put my phone in my um, in my boxers and on the back and when I do stop at a red light and there is some other people I just want to quickly stop my music to do not disturb everybody around me so the only thing I have to do anywhere I am on the watch I just press and hold that button and press that one once and it pause my music and when I do restart and I'm far to other people's when I just press back there go back there and I'm back on my activity page very very well done I love the quick access of it you can't store music inside uh, the watch and listen it with your Bluetooth speakers or headphones uh, but you can control the, the music of your phone and that is very well done Okay, for the next part, I will bring some white sheets uh, with a pen. Because we're gonna talk about the battery. Whoops. What do we have to say about the battery? Don't, uh, uh, well, keep in mind that those numbers are for the 45 millimeter model. Um, so on my first charge, while using the battery 24 hours a day um, my battery lasts for eight and a half days so in those eight days and a half this mean that this little guy was looking at my hearth rate checking my steps uh, 
showing me my phone notification, looking at my uh, respiration rate, and all those kind of things, showing me the altitude, uh, calculate the barometric pressure, all those things for eight days and a half without charging. Yes, this is a solar model, but uh, most of the time in the days I'm inside my studio, so I'm not very exposed to sun and I do my uh, activity outside at night when there's pretty much no sun. So uh, you can say that it's pretty much the same result as uh, a non-solar model. Uh, but that's not it. Uh, so that's eight days and a half in smartwatch mode. Uh, but uh, during those eight and a half days, I did 1017 minutes of GPS, which is 17 hours of GPS and that is a lot of hours for that that numbers of days uh, 17 hours of GPS straight would be good would be very good but it is extended on eight days and a half so that is, that is very very good for a watch of that size now if we look at uh, the expectation that uh, Garmin gives us, well, if you just use it into uh, smart mode, smart, sorry, smart mode watch, uh, you should have 28 days of battery. And if you go with solar, well, I'm a bit skeptical about that, but you should have infinite power. Uh, if you're exposed, exposed to a lot of suns for three hours a day. So that's why I'm very skeptical. Will you really be exposed to a really high uh, intensity of sun for a full three hours a day? I doubt about it. Uh, even if you work outside, sometimes your watch can fall under your shirt or... It have to be straight exposed. I, I, I'm very skeptical about it. But still, 28 days is a lot. And probably that if you don't use the GPS, you will go way beyond over 28 days. I do trust that. But infinite power? Ugh, I don't think so. Anyway, if you got that kind of watch, you will surely use the GPS. Uh, but about the GPS, uh, if, if the battery is full, uh, you can get 30 hours of GPS that is a lot and if you use the solar energy you could go potentially up to 48 hours still with a lot of sun but now that you are on the GPS activity yeah well that makes more sense that you will get a lot of suns and you also got well I don't know why I do talk about that but you got the econo mode that should last for if you have a full battery for 25 days and yes in that mode because it doesn't drain a lot of battery uh, probably that you will get that infinite uh, battery life I think it's possible on econo mode now if we talk about the uh, temperature well the watch can be used between minus 20 Celsius to uh, to plus uh, 60 Celsius if you are in Fahrenheit that's minus 4 to uh, 140 and if you want to charge your watch that should be made between uh, 0 and 45 and if you are in Fahrenheit that's uh, from 32 to uh, 113 and if you want to charge it over solar that would be between 0 and 60 Celsius or between 32 and 140 Celsius. So yes, it is very cold outside. You probably won't be able to charge your battery with solar energy. Okay, now let's talk about screen lizability. Um, what this is. Uh, well, the screen is very easy to read in any direction and actually because uh, you're looking at it through a camera it is actually more hard it is harder to read than from my uh, naked eye um, 
you don't need a lot of light to be able to see the screen. Uh, it's very well done. It's very clear. Uh, there's uh, there's even the backlight. So if you're not able to see, I uh, just press on that button. That does turn on the backlight. And the backlight setting is very well done. If we go see it in the menu, inside system, and inside the backlight menu, it is divided in three sections. So you got during an activity, general use, and during sleep. In all of those uh, those categories, you will find the very same settings. So you can choose the brightness level if you want to turn it on with keys so every time you press a keys when you got an alert when you do the gesture so ju the gesture is that so if you point up the uh the device uh in, in a position to watch the time well it will automatically turn on the backlight and then you choose uh the time that you want the the, the backlight to be turned on um so I like to do so, like, so for example, uh, when you are in jester, because in every sub categories, you have the option between off on and after sunset. So if, for example, that jester during an activity, well, it's actually on what I do usually jester, I just set it to after sunset. So I don't need it in the day because the screen is very readable. And at night, well, at, at, as soon as the sun set, every time I do that movement, only if I'm into a sport activity, the screen will turn on. That is very well done. There's only one default to it. And uh, it, it is uh, someone that is watching my video that make me realize it. Um, it, it. It says that it was about the polarity of the screen. That does make sense. Uh, it's like if the screen the screen or not the screen but the, the glass has been installed in, in the wrong side because when the backlight is turned on if I take a look at the watch into that direction it is all whitish and I'm not able to see the numbers into that direction direction so if I would look at it that way that would be fine but in that way it's not possible so when I do cycling my wrist is actually just like that because I hold my handlebar, handlebar just like that and when I want to take a look I just do that and my face is actually right there so I'm looking at it into that direction and uh, so th because I do that movement the backlight turn on and because of that angle, I'm not able to see it. So instead of just doing that, I need to do that. And that's not pleasant. Um, the guy that told me that into the comments said it was only on uh, the tactical model, uh, but I did not verify. But that's the only point, uh, the, the only negative point I can say about the uh, lisibility of the screen. Well, actually, this is a notification that came in. So let's talk about that. As you can see, this is something I receive on uh, Facebook Messenger. So uh, Edgar just sent me um, something. And uh, that's the only thing I'm able to do. I am able to see it and I would be able to reply. So if I press here, I can just uh, dismiss it, like it or reply or block the application if I don't want to have those kind of notification later. But if I go on reply, I will be able to say yes, no, okay, can't talk now on my way, those kind of things that those are preset. I just never use those function. Uh, but now that's another <laughs> message that came in. So it did go over, uh, over the other one. But uh, just uh, right there, you see those uh, reply, those uh, those texts are, are pre-made, but you can make your own. So if you have something special to say often, you can add it just right there. Let's go back. Now, let's talk about how easy it is to navigate inside the watch and control everything. Uh, let's talk about the uh, interface, interface efficiency. Uh, very, very well made. I, I seriously love the way uh, Garmin did think about their watch. Uh, the basic thing you need to understand is that this go up, this go down, this select and this go back. 
So you see, as I do navigate inside the widget here, and it goes very fast. Sometimes you will get some lags. So if I'm on the main screen and press on button a few times, uh, actually it, go, it does go well. But just sometimes you do feel a little bit of lag. But I go up and up and down, and I select it just right there. Go back just right here there. So you can navigate very easily inside everything. And over that there is the menu button just right here. That if you press and hold, you're gonna have access to some features of what you are on uh, right now so actually you see i was on the watch face so there's the watch face and if i go on the weather app right there i got my weather option and if i go on the sunrise sunset i got uh well there's no feature for that one maybe if i go inside yeah i can choose another location to see the so, so, so you see you can do a lot of things there is sub menus and sub sub menus and sub 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 menus you can do a lot of things and is I, i'm someone that uh, have a very easy understanding of electronic device maybe that's why but i think it is very well made um the menu is pretty well built i think it will not be easy for everyone to navigate inside it but I would not worry about it because if you don't want to navigate into those sub menus and just want something that is uh, easy to start an activity and those things, well, you can <laughs> just do that with that one and not playing with the uh, options. Uh, when you take it out of the box, it is ready to use. Uh, you can start an activity and it will record it. You don't need to do uh, anything fancy to make it work. Uh, probably that most of the people will use only 10% of the watch cap capacity. Uh, but if you want to push the bar a little bit further and play inside the menu to see what your watch can do, well, you will see that you can do a lot. And don't worry to try some things. Uh, you won't kill your watch by pressing some buttons unless you <laughs> press those two one and enable the kill switch. Uh, but anyway, it will not kill it. Uh, it will just factory reset it. So it will e swipe everything inside and uh, you will still be able to use the watch. Uh, by the way, this is only... Uh, a review video if you want to see my tutorial about uh, that watch and the previous model also because uh, most of the things do look alike uh, you can see my playlist just right here there's a lot of tutorials video on that watch just right there that's on my other channel uh, how to okay now let's talk about the watch band um not my favorite uh well it's a silicone one i mean it's fine but it's not this comfortable. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It's not. It's not not comfortable. But you got so much better uh, wristband at Garmin, and this one is by far uh, not the best. <laughs> so if I take this one for example, uh, that's another one that I buy. It is compatible with it. You can do change it. But uh, if you look at the Phoenix uh, series, uh, that's the Apex Two. Uh, it is easy to. Uh, replace and that's not the case with that one uh, actually with that one you need to uh, take a look at the side just right here and there's actually a little pin old that actually will be very hard to do on camera oh, let's put a little bit more light inside and so I need to press on that and while I'm pressing on it, I will, well, okay, that was not so bad, but still you need a tool to do that. And when you did remove uh, that guy, you can take the pin that is inside the wristband and put it back inside here, like that. And then uh, you can use any uh, quick connect quick connect is it quick connect no it's uh this <laughs> um and you can uh use it quick fit quick fit that was the word uh and yes you can uh, set it just like that but uh, i don't think they fit well on it um 
doesn't look this bad on the screen right now but in real life it doesn't feel it doesn't fit this well because as you can see um, it is made to receive a wristband that is just like that you see it, it hold into that position while this one can move freely and yeah well it's not very well made so I will just put back the other one so now I will need to <laughs> remove again the pin and now we'll need a knife to do that because I have nothing to pull on then it moved far away <laughs> so we'll set it back right inside here So yeah, not the worst, but uh, really not the best, especially when you compare how easy, easy it is to uh, set and remove the uh, default uh, quick fit band on the other watches. Now let's talk about trust. How do I trust this device? I do trust it a lot. As I said, the GPS tracking is very fine. I can do believe the position that the watch give me is fine because when I uh, go and go back on the same track, I'm track on the very same place. Uh, I did a few tests to do the very same run uh, days after days and end up always with the same distance. So that give me the information that it is accurate uh, the earth rate sensor as the back is, at the back is also very um, very precise I always have a good uh, earth rate showing up um, and I don't worry the device to fail me uh, it did never crash me uh, that is very important because if you are lost in the wood and uh, and your watch kind of reset or uh, power cycle just because it froze or something like that uh, that could but could potentially uh, put your life at risk because you may rely on your watch to uh, go out of a place uh, maybe not the best idea to only rely on it but still uh, for me Garmin devices are very uh, safe device uh, they never they never failed me, uh, never put me into trouble, and I did use them a lot. So, yeah, I trust the Garmin Instinct too. Now, let's talk about the water resistance. And it says just right there that it is a 100 meter uh, resistance. So, this means it's graded 10 ADM, and you don't need to worry about uh, diving with it unless you go lower than 100 meter. You don't need to worry about taking your shower with it or swimming with it. Take a bath. Uh, no worry about that. You can go to uh you can you can uh, sw swim or jump into water you can do jet ski surfing whatever you want you don't need to worry about uh water getting inside now let's talk about mapping um well you don't have a map like you can find on the phoenix with streets uh, rivers uh, elevation and those kind of things uh, but you will do have do i have something showing up here uh, I will be, I would need to start something. Yeah, this. So that's a black, uh, <laughs> that's a black screen with a dot. You are the dot and it will show you where you are uh, with your track of the previous uh, minutes or hours. And uh, that's the only thing you will have. Uh, so if you do a track, a many kilometers track, you will be able to come back on your feet by following of the trail that you trace by walking or cycling or whatever uh, but that's the only thing you will get so you got the trackback feature and you can also point in the dire direction you start to try to come back in straight line also if you create an itinerary on garmin connect you would be able to follow that line on that 
emptiness of the screen that you have. Now let's talk about the size of the screen on the size of the watch. Uh, that's okay. I mean, there's better, but it's not this bad because also you have to consider that right here there is the solar panel but uh, it could be better it's kind of a weird shape uh, you can see the screen right inside here so you've got those lost space right there and well I think the biggest lost space is that circle I don't know why they made it physical because when you do navigate inside the watch you can realize that um, it's just a screen <laughs> with something over it and they do change the color inside here so you see like that i'm able to see all those information and you see there's lost something here inside the weather because we have a square screen inside a circle bezel that's kind of weird and you see if i move that here i do lost that information uh, well, actually, it give me an information about the weather. It says that it's cloudy outside. But if I'm here, it says it's, uh, well, it's still sun. Uh, but if I go on step, you see that information doesn't give me anything. It just says that I'm on step. And it's over the T of sport. And I'm also missing missing the, the first letter just right here. It's not that bad, but it's just a point that I realized that sometime uh, it is not convenient to have this kind of screen. But, uh, well, it's the way it is. I just think the screen is a little bit weird. Maybe they could put that circle virtually and not physically so they could use the whole screen uh, in in some circumstance cir circumstances now if we talk about the weight of the watch well it is very lightweight of course uh, i do compare it with the watch that i use uh, the most so yes there is the garmin phoenix the tactics uh, well that's the, that's the phoenix that's the epics those watch are way more heavier than this one uh, because they are made of titanium and uh, more heavy uh, material this one is made of well as i said uh, as i said at the beginning it's made as plastic so yes it's very lightweight and when i put it on my wrist it does feel like nothing now let's talk about language so if i go inside the menu right here go inside system i've got the language section here and there is 28 language available i'll let you see a language available right there there's a lot of them they are a straight built in the watch so that's a very good job uh, Garmin thank you for putting all those language available now if we do talk about the quantity of information you can have on a single screen uh, well actually on this one that is my favorite sh favorite watch face I do have six information which is my hearth rate my uh, moon cycle time of the day uh, altitude temperature outside and sunrise and sunset this is a single information yes you do have uh, two information but that's only because that one is made like that if I would like to put the altitude right there i would only have the altitude i will not be able to have the altitude and the uh, number of steps of, of the day for example uh, but you can also change it for another watch face and i did find a watch face i think it's that one here we have one two three four five six seven eight data fields it's the same principle for the middle one uh, you can only have one information on that one but uh the others uh, well, that's make eight data fields on the same screen. That's a lot. When you are into an activity, so let's say that I go inside bike. Uh, let's say that I go on uh, bike settings, data screens. Well, I do have one information here, two, three, four, five, and I'm able to change them. And that's not it. Um, there's something great five is maybe not a lot of information but you can set up an, an automation if i go here there is the auto climb feature and as you can see it will start at 500 meters per hour so when i i do reach that vertical speed i can choose the screen i have for 
a round screen and a climb screen. So if I come back right there, data screens, so this screen is my run screen. So when I do cycle at full speed, I want to have my earth rate, my speed, my average speed, my distance and the time of the day. And when I start climbing, the watch change automatically for that page. So now I've got my elevation, my vertical speed, the number of meter I've climbed, my earth rate. And I don't know why I put that one, but that's the sunset time. Uh, so that's what I have as information. So if if you don't have enough uh, um, data on the same screen, for sure you can use the up and down button to toggle uh, or to navigate from a page to another, but you can also turn on some automation. That is very well done. Also, something that I love is that when you are into an activity, you can put it on pause and just go out and you resume it later. So if you stop at a restaurant, it can go back to your main screen the activity will be on pause and when you want to start it back you press the start button and it will restart uh, where you're at now let's talk about alarm there there is two way to reach it uh you got you can press and hold the set button right here and you got your alarm right there or you can reach it from uh, the controls so that was this one so both are the same uh, actually, you can see that's the one that is enabled for 10 o'clock on Sunday, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, you can choose what you want to have. So let's say that I pick this one. Uh, actually, it's on. Well, I will go in and add alarm. Add alarm. I choose the time I want to have my alarm. So let's say 8 o'clock. Uh, it's repeat on. Well, we need to go on edit. <laughs> uh, 8 o'clock, repeat off. So it will... Uh, ring only once and then it will go off I choose the time repeat so on the repeat as I said you have off daily weekdays weekend and custom so you can choose the day you want and you can choose to have that's what I love vibration only tone and vibration or just tone uh, I like to have vibration uh, if you are sleeping with someone uh, it will just vibrate on your wrist and it won't wake up everybody around you so yeah, I think it's a very good feature to have just that um, vibration. Uh, the alarm is very well done. Uh, now let's talk about sleep track. Uh, to get it, you just need to wear the watch on your wrist and it will track your sleep. So if I go here, uh, well, you can see that last night I slept for 7 hours and 11 minutes. Um, not sure it's very accurate. Uh, in the morning, I do some, uh, I answer every comment uh, when I do wake up in the morning. And actually, you see, this morning I did wake up at 8 o'clock or some, uh, no, maybe I did wake up a bit later. Maybe it's accurate. Maybe it's accurate, but I, I did realize that some days when I do answer my comment, uh, it does still think that I'm sleeping. Uh, but anyways, you can see your um, night on that graph or uh, you can see the resume just right here. So I got two hours and four minutes of deep sleep, three hours and 50, 26 minutes, minutes of light, light sleep. And well, you see the rest. So that's what it gives you as information. And you really only need to wear the watch to get the information. Now let's talk about the do not disturb mode. Oh, this one that is just right here. You can enable it manually here or you can set up a schedule to uh, make it enable. I, I think I made it enable from uh, 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, just to make sure I won't wake up. And it's very well done. Uh, if you receive notification, they will show up on the screen, but it will not ring. It will not vibrate. It will just do everything so you don't wake up because of your watch uh, also the backlight will be uh more dim uh and uh, it's very well made uh, i love when when your watch won't ma make you uh won't wake you up and most of the watch from the competition does and this one does it very well now how does the watch motivate you to move um well, not a lot. Uh, I think 
Well, actually, this watch motivate me to move because I just like the fact that it does record everything and it put it on a graph. It kind of gamify a little bit uh, uh, your sport activity. Uh, there's a saying that if it's not on Strava, it doesn't count. Well, that's what motivate me to uh, move. I wanted to have it on Strava. I've got my calendar with my activity every day since 2020. I never skip a day and that's a motivation for me. But it's not the watch that will tell you, hey, you should move. Well, in fact, there's a feature that if you don't move after one hour, it can say move. But, well, does it really motivate you to move to have a device on your wrist that tells you to move? Well, maybe. Uh, only, only you know. But um, I think Polar make the watch that motivates you the most to uh, move because they got the inactivity stamps. So you have you have a red flag on your uh, calendar when you're not moving. I think this is motivating and uh, well, Polar do that. Otherwise, you can also find uh, your number of steps of the day was right there with an objective. Maybe that is something that can motivate you to move. Uh, you got the same thing for stair climbs. You got some features like that. The next point will be about the altimeter barometer. So actually you can see that I'm actually at 92 meters high. Um, it does work very well uh, because it's not only an altimeter, it's an altimeter based on the GPS and the barometric pressure. And it's very good at it. Uh, actually, I'm, I think it's 91 meters. It does vary a little bit from that one, even if I'm st stationary. Um, actually, the atmospheric pressure does change, so maybe that's why. But I do not need to calibrate it very often. If I take a look at that other watch, what is my actual elevation? You say it says 91. If I look on this one, it says 92. Uh, so they are pretty much at the very same level. And I don't really need to calibrate. Maybe one or two time a year I need to recalibrate it. But that's pretty much that's it. It's very, very well made. Um, and, and if you go out for a big activity, uh, most of the time, the numbers of meters climb and decline are the very same or it can have a little variation of maybe one percent no more okay now let's talk about price um <laughs> price uh, i will not say the price you can follow my link in the description uh they will take you to a store in your country i don't like to talk about price because they do change over time and they do change from country to another uh, but what i want to say is that this one, this little guy, the Garmin Instinct first generation is a watch that I did recommend a lot because it does a lot of things. Uh, almost, <laughs> almost as much as this big guy, the Phoenix 7X. Uh, of course, there is no mapping. The battery is more cheaper. The case is more cheaper. You got, you got what you pay for. But still, it does a lot of things for very few bucks. Now, this one is way more expensive. But yes, for sure, you got a better screen. You got a better look, in my opinion. You got a better battery. You got a better earth rate sensor. You got a better um, altimeter because the barometer is not... Um, I think, they, yeah, they put the barometer here on that one and that was very stupid because you can sweat inside and that falls a little bit the data but uh, this one is way more expensive than this one and yes it does more things i think it worth um it worth paying for it but uh, my point is is that at this point the price you will pay for this one I would put few extra bucks to get a Phoenix. Well, maybe not that one because that's a Phoenix 7X. That's over the double of the price. Uh, but you can get a seven, a Phoenix 7S instead of X. Uh, that would be about the same size as this one. And you would get mapping, better look, uh, quality material, uh, better screen, better everything for 
uh, just a bit more money. So that's my point about uh, the price. By the way, the link in the description, if you use them and purchase the watch from there, I will make a commission out of the transaction. So if you use it, thank you. It's the same price for you, but I do a commission. So thank you if you use it. Now let's talk about the antenna you will find inside the watch. If you want to connect other devices, you got a Bluetooth antenna. So I think it's a Bluetooth smart antenna that makes that is made to connect. Uh, if I go inside the sensor and accessories, if you want to connect wrist, hearth rate, pulse oximeter, compass, altimeter, barometer, club sensor, uh, you can do that uh, with Bluetooth bluetooth smart devices and if you have an old device with ant plus it is also compatible now let's talk about the usb connection at the back right there very very well done uh yeah of course it's a proprietary proprietary how do you say that in english proprietary uh <laughs> only garmin got those connector uh, but uh, they have the very same connector on every watch. So uh, if you have a friend with a Garmin watch, it he will have or she will have the very same connector. The cable is actually this one and is also very well made. So uh, it does look like that. You can connect it on any side. So if I take that here connect it this way and you see it's it's very solid the cable is very small doesn't take a lot of place it's very solid you can connect it on both side uh, well the only downside there is is that it's still uh, USB a connection please Carmen give us the option to or just just leave uh, just deliver it with the USB C connection uh, it would be time. It's 2022 now. Uh, USB-C is a thing since a lot of years. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much just the only point, uh, the only negative point I have to say about it. Okay, now let's talk about shortcut. That's another thing that I love. Uh, if I go inside the menu here and then go down to the very last option, which is system and go down to hotkeys. Here, uh, like I show, show you a little bit earlier, I've got my change port if I hold GPS, but there's some other option that I can add. And as you can see, this one, GPS plus down, have nothing. So if I go inside here, I can find some other options that I can uh, enable inside here. That is another way to control your watch very quickly. Um, very well done again. Earlier, we see the live track feature when I did start an activity. Uh, that is a feature that you can enable on your phone and you need to have your phone with you. It will share your location with the people you want. So when I go out, some members of my family does have access to my live location so they can know where I am. So if something bad happened to me, they will know where to find me. And if they are just waiting for me for dinner, well, they might see that I'm about to arrive or that I'm too far and they should not wait for me. About the application, you got it on the phone and you got it on the computer. So that's very up to you. You can use it uh, the way you want. I will not talk about it into that video, but uh, on both application, you can pretty much do the same thing. And that's very well done. Uh, you can synchronize your watch over Bluetooth to your phone or with the USB connection to Garmin Express on your Windows or Mac. Uh, that's really up to you. And now we will talk about the customer service. Um, not the best. Um, it's not terrible, but it's just not the best. Uh, I did communicate with uh, all uh, watches company uh, customer service recently. So Karas, Sunto, Polar and uh, Garmin and Garmin was the slowest to answer and I, and I even needed to um, say hey did you forget me and so yes that, that was very slow and uh, but they will take care of you but they just does not offer the best customer service that's that's all I can say 
Um, finally, finally, do I recommend it? Uh, yes, yes, I do recommend it. I think you get what you pay for. It gives you a lot of things. Uh, it gives you a lot of options. It's a really, really good watch. I just think it is expensive for a plastic watch. Um, I mean, I do recommend it. And if I would have the choice between the Garmin Instinct 1 and 2, of course I would choose the Instinct 2. But I'm not as excited about the Instinct 2 as I was about the Instinct 1. Because I think the Instinct 1 is a wonderful watch to get inside the market and just have a GPS watch on your wrist because it's cheap. It's very cheap and it does so many things. And I mean, I mean, inside, calculate your distance, hearth rate, altitude, and those things. They done pretty much the same thing, except about the barometer because it is poorly placed. But I mean, they, they do, they do the same thing, uh, except this one have a better screen, a better battery, a better display, better, better few things. Uh, but it's way more expensive. So, yes, it's a good product, but, I mean, still, at this point of quantity of money, I uh, would go to a Phoenix. That's just my point. Yes, it's a good watch that I recommend, but I also recommend you to put a bit more money to get something uh, with more quality material to get the mapping and... Yeah, the mapping is a pretty much big deal. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my point on it. So, again, uh, if you want to buy it, you can use my link in the description. Thank you very much if you use it. I do make a commission out of it, and that does help me to, uh, well, refund myself those watches that I buy and to buy some other watches to make some other great video. So I hope you have enjoyed this one and have a great day. So this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. And if you need help to find this product online, please see my links in the description. And finally, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you're looking for a great review video. See ya.